having your joy stolen, having that heavy tar, thick feeling where you almost feel depressed in your business because you feel like you've not made any gains, you just can't get anything to work out, it's not growing faster than it is, comparing yourself to everybody else. Well, you have to protect yourself from yourself and here's how you do it. It's redirecting the focus, right? You'll hear some people say, well, you know what? Nothing else matters if you woke up today. And I agree with that. You are right. Nothing else matters if you woke up today. But in addition to that, you want to make sure that it's the glass half full, glass half empty scenario. If you look at your deficiencies, you look at what you don't think you've accomplished, you look at the frustration because you're trying, because you're so zoned in on some small thing that you're trying to break through, but you've completely somehow lost sight of all the gains that you have made, then what will happen is, is you will lose your joy and you won't be able to do anything now because that paralysis slash almost depression kicks in. I know I am talking to somebody on this video. I've done it to myself. I have just nerded out on these little things that need, well, they're, they seem huge, but they're little things because you're trying to get the breakthroughs in your business or something to change or you've tried so hard and you just can't get any growth or you're not making any sales or you've tried all these different methods and this hasn't worked, but you have to realize, okay, let's, let's pan out. They say, when in doubt, pan out. It's like looking at, the, at an investment. Well, if you look at it on the hourly, you're gonna see these extreme sharps, uh, spikes and gains, right? You're gonna see it like this, and it looks like massive volatility. When you back out, back out, back out, you go, wow, it was here, and there was just little stuff going along, but it's up here now. And that's what you have to understand. So what I've done is I have learned I haven't mastered it, but I've gotten really good at it, if that makes sense, right? You're, you could always get better is what I mean. I'll have a frustrating moment. I'll feel a little bit eh, depressed seems to be the, the, the operative word. But I go, goodness, you know, this should be here by now. I wish I had done this. This shouldn't be like this at this point. We can't get gains in here. I go, wait a minute. More people than ever know what I do and all the things we do. More people than ever we are friends with. Our children are smarter than ever. I understand more about my business and about the future of our family, and I'm engaged in it effectively more than I ever have. At this age, I enjoy my life better. I like who I am as a person more. I like how I think better. There are less little um, youthful derailments that so easily try to come in and take me off course. And so I go, hold on a minute. Look at all the gains I've made. Like for, I'll give you a perfect example. So I wrote a book January 1st of 2020 called Cut It Out, Getting Your Head Straight in Network Marketing. I was specifically addressing the people, the massive numbers of people that are going into home-based businesses right now. And most of them are choosing a direct sales home-based business model, right? So I wrote the book because I saw massive deficiency in the industry. As far as training, the, the headspace is so paralyzing because people will come into this industry and they'll treat it completely different than they will the current job, as I always say, that likely sees them as disposable. Even if you're faithful to it, if you don't own the company, you're still disposable. And but they'll do that to the death for 30 years, not, not ask any questions, miss ball games, you know, sacrifice time in marriage, etc., just to get the paycheck in the promises of promotion because they're keeping their insurance, etc. So people, the masses will do that and they will perform in their jobs to the point where if they don't, they know they're fired or they'll get let go because everybody's job is um, hinged on performance. Now, in a home-based business, it's not hinged on performance. You could, you could casually play with it for 20 years if you felt like it, or you could go through the stratosphere depending on how aggressive you want to be in the business. But when it comes to a home-based model, people allow a lot of emotion in it, 
and they're always waiting for consensus. And well, I reached out to X number of people. I've marketed myself 10 different ways. I've done 50 meetings. I haven't seen the growth I've wanted to see yet. What they haven't understood is that all of those early stages are seed planting. Very rarely does somebody say, hey, I see what you have. I see what you do. I see what you're offering, business or product, whatever you're offering. I like it. Let's do it right now. Here's my credit card. Some do. 3% of the people do that. 97% don't. And there's this trickle effect, exposure, 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 exposure. Whether well, they see you online, they see you in the mall, they see you at church, they see you in the car line, they see you somewhere. Or somebody mentions you, it's just awareness points. And suddenly after about 12 exposures, now you're starting to see the curve change. And now more people are saying, hey, you know what? I'd like to be a part of it. But people don't realize that. And so there's all of this headspace, self-sabotage, unworthiness, um, comparing themselves with others, being able to serve everybody else to their own demise, but not being able to value themselves enough to work hard for themselves. So they can easily expend themselves on everyone else, but when it comes to rewarding themselves for their own future, now there's all of this stuff that kicks in. You wake up every day with a mirror in your face and you have to win the battle with the person you're looking at, all of these things. So I wrote a book dealing with all the headspace, right? Personally, I think it's the most effective psychology book, if you will, dealing with how to be victorious in home-based businesses, whether, whether it's direct sales, network marketing, you're a franchise owner, you're a real estate agent, it doesn't matter. The, the, the concepts work universally. So I wrote this book out of need. I thought in the beginning that the whole world would buy it, right? A lot did. But I'm fine. So I go, okay, wait a minute. How come more people aren't buying it? I mean, I, this book sold X number and that book sold X number. And here's a book that, you know, definitely doesn't have what I have in it, right? How we do that. And they've sold bazillions of copies. And this book, I mean, you know, do you know the story of that one? And so we go there, but I realized that it was people don't even know that I wrote one. The masses didn't even know that I wrote one, but I assumed, see how we play these tricks on ourselves? I assumed that more people understood what I wrote and how desperately they need it. And yet I realized that most people don't even know I do it. The mass majority of the planet has no concept I even wrote one. And they have no idea that they need the book. But I played this argument which created frustration. I'm going, you know what? Maybe I should change the price. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should get a publisher. Maybe I should try that. Maybe, maybe I, sh I should have added more pictures. I should have done this. And what I realized is I had to stop the music and I said, wait a minute, this book is life changing. It has unbelievable content. It is all of my life experiences over the last 30 plus years, having a lot of how our success looks today has come from the direct sales model. And I said, this would save people years of pain. So I backed out and I said, wait a minute. And I'm reading through it again, looking at the chapters. And I say, you know what? I don't know that I'd change anything because when I wrote it, it was very authentically me at the time, still is. And these points are life-giving. So I stopped again. Let's go back to the half glass, half full, half empty. I stopped and I said, you know what? Look at all I did. I sat there and I wrote this thing tirelessly until my arms went numb. And I, you know, rewrote chapters and overthought stuff and lost files and tried to load it the wrong way. And I did this for months. But look what I've done. I created an amazing resource that anybody that works for themselves would and should and can benefit from. There's nothing been written like it. I did an absolutely incredible thing. So that changed the feeling, made me proud of it again. Does that make sense? Made me proud of it again. Even though I have a litany of people that have said, this has changed my life. Best book I've ever read. Da, 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 da. It's incredible, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much for writing it. I needed this so bad. I sat there and cried through this chapter and I get this all the time. I couldn't hear that. I couldn't see that because I was too busy in my headspace thinking that somehow I should have gotten these different gains. And I'll tell you something about anything in life. You plant seeds, plant seeds, plant seeds, plant seeds, plant seeds. Sometimes you, you go, you know what? None of this is growing. Have you guys ever done that? You take a bag of 
Scott's grass seed, whatever you're going to buy at the local store. You go out, you have patches in your yard, you throw the grass seed everywhere, you overseed it. You do all the stuff you're supposed to do. You see nothing. It rains the next afternoon. You're like, oh great, that was a waste. And suddenly you wake up one day, you look out the window and there's a green hue all over your yard. We have to realize that the decisions we make are seeds being planted, not always a harvest that you can go grab right away. Right? So I wanted to share that about, about the book because it was a real issue for me. All right. Another thing that I'd like to discuss is how many of you are so obsessed because of the deficiencies that you seemed to have convinced yourself that you have that the want to is gone. The want to of being an entrepreneur, the want to of being more aggressive in your business, the want to of being proud, carrying yourself well, holding your shoulders back, rather than that apathetic, soft, apologetic kind of, well, would you, I mean, when, when people do that, folks, and if you're doing that, I promise you it's the reason you're not having more engagement and more growth in your business, no matter what you sell, what you offer, what your opportunity is, or what your products are. Because the messenger muddies the message, right? The messenger muddies the message. And so what happens is no matter how pure the message is, the messenger soured it, right? Well, I would never be a politician because after all, look at all the politicians do. I would never buy a car, you know, be in car sales because after all, people at car sales look at the way they are. Oh my gosh, they, you know, look at all these people in churches, these pastors. I mean, after all, da, 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 da. And what happens is, is one bad example, then they take it and they, and they, they blanket it across the entire space and they generalize it, right? So, they take one example, they generalize an entire segment because of, of offense, because the messenger was crazy. So let me tell you something. If you have run into somebody that is in a home-based business, is an entrepreneur, works for themselves at some capacity, real estate agent, franchise owner, whatever, and they, and they are buried in the concepts of trying to grow it, and because of the way they postured themselves, you dismissed their industry because of it. Well, now you realize why people may have resisted you and what you offer. I'm being very real here. I've had bad moments and bad windows where I have not been the best messenger. And whatever I shared, there was something weird coming out of me because of, of, of where my heart was. So remember, you have to shake that stuff off. It goes back to a bad hair day. I use this example all the time. If you are late for a meeting and you run in the door and everybody's waiting on you and you walk in and you say, oh gosh, forgive me guys, I'm so late. I didn't mean to, you know, it took me forever to get here and oh, I don't look at my, I'm soaking wet. Don't look at my hair. I mean, give me, you know, la, 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 la. It's a miracle I even made it today. Now everybody is thinking about, gosh, you were so late. Look at your outfit. You're wet. Look at your bad hair. How many people lay all of this stuff before people unnecessarily? And nobody cares. They take you for face value. Hear that. They take you for face value. Nobody knows you have a bad hair day unless you advertise it. Now they can't hear anything you're saying because they think, oh, now they're staring at your hair. Do you see how we lay that stuff before us? So if the messenger, I've talked to folks and they say, Gabriel, I can't, I mean, this is all over the world, by the way, other companies, different industries, people have called me, we've messaged, we've done video chats, training, I've coached them. I can't seem to grow. I say, all right, a couple things. Let's look at your social media. You know, are you a hot mess on your social media? Are you ranting about all kinds of, of, of stuff that the, the platform is not going to convince anybody otherwise? Let's get real. If you think it's going to change people's minds, it's probably not. And if you're just all over the board and disconnected and right, people, they, they can't hear it when you're a mess. I'm just being honest. So I say, let's look at your social media. Do you have a cat as your profile? Well, you should probably get rid of your profile picture as a cat and you should probably have it be your picture. Smiling, not looking down like this and having the camera go up your sinuses. 
right? We've all seen that. Or a bad shot like this. Do a quality picture. Why? Because it shows respect. Did you know that one of the reasons why, and we live in a society, well, first of all, let me, let me back up. So check your social media. If there's anything, uh, if there's innuendo, if there's crash jokes, if there's foul language, if there's suggestive pictures, right? You're at the beach. Well, that's fine. You don't need to show yourself. Make sure you, you don't need to do that stuff. It's not it doesn't, it's not excellent, okay? You might get likes and followers, but I promise you they're not the likes and the followers you want. And I know people that do this kind of soliciting of all of this odd, edgy stuff, and I go, folks, when somebody looks at your social media, that's kind of like your new credit score. They are judging you based upon what they see. And if they see all of this stuff, it is painting a picture. It's, pr it's producing an argument in the minds of the people that are viewing you. First thing, we have this happen all the time. They Google me, Gabriel Sedlak. Okay, let's look at this. There's his website. Here's this. Here's, this. here's what he's doing. Here's a picture of his wife. Does he love his kids? Da, 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 da. Oh, that, he's in that car. He's had that car. He lives here. And they, they go, oh. And I've even had said people, yeah. People have told me, yeah, we, we stalked you for a while before we talked to you because we just weren't, we wanted to know who you guys were. Crazy as it sounds, that's what people do. That's what you do. That's what I've done. You, oh, who is that? And you check them out. And what do you do? The first thing you do is you Google them or you look at them on Facebook or you look at them on some social media or Instagram just to figure out who they are. And what they represent is how you categorize them, right? So if your stuff is all over the board, crazy, issue-oriented, not excellent, you're going to have a hard time growing your business or having people adopt what it is you're offering. It's just that important. Excellence. We live in a time where excellence, hold on. We live in a time, oh, that was good. Let me get one more sip. My wife made, um, get this, she makes almond milk. This is a complete sidetrack. She makes almond milk. She has this machine that makes almond milk and makes it super, super thick, and we use it as creamer. It's the best creamer in the world. She made cashew peppermint, uh, 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 chocolate peppermint cashew milk, but real dense as a creamer, and we've had it in the coffee. It's magical, so you got to try it one day. <laughs> um, and that's the other thing. Be real. When you're on a video, how about I take a sip and you hear a slurp in the microphone? How about I talk about the creamer that my wife, why can't we be real? Oh, da, 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 da. we always have to feel like we're perfect all the time. I was on a call with my CPA a few minutes ago, right? Called him up. I said, hey, I've got a few questions. If you got a minute, he goes, yeah, no problem. We start talking. His dog is barking in the background. Guess what? Fantastic. That's real, right? Sometimes my kids run up the stairs in there. So don't allow life. I do most of my videos in my vehicles. I sit in the cars and I am doing videos. And it doesn't matter if there's trucks going by. The other day I did a, an hour training and a fire truck went by and another truck went by. The best thing you can do is to demystify all of the weird sales mini stuff and all of the packaging by being transparent, honest, and real. But anyway, we live in a society that excellence is just not very common anymore. Let's put it that way. People do not mind walking out, um, walking outside, looking, looking, looking rough. People say, "Oh, don't judge them." It is stop it. It's not about that. There's a there's excellence, and here's why: when you walk in excellence, it says, "I respect you enough to carry myself well and to dress well and to present myself well in public." It's both a respect to you and it's a respect of me because I respect myself. And you'll see now it's very common for all of the crazy stuff and all of the, the, the you, don't see, you don't see a lot of men dressed well, well, well coiffed, good language without lots of profanities, um, non-wandering eyes, strong, kind, um, follow through. It's all of this other stuff, right? And it's become the new normal. So when you are excellent, you, you bypass the multitudes that have just gotten sloppy. Because sloppy is the new cool, I guess. But not really. You may be entertained. Here's how, the, how it all works. People are entertained by all that stuff. 
but they don't do business with that stuff. So you want to be excellent, right? You see a woman, she's wearing a nice outfit, carries herself well, it's well tailored, it's modest, it's beautiful. Guess what? Carries herself well, articulate. That is excellent. I heard um, a very famous uh, uh, celebrity say this. They, they were talking about all of these different social issues, right, that are always brought up. And they say, how do we deal with it? And he says, you need to stop talking about it. He says, bottom line, quit talking about it. And he says, if you want to bypass all of this neurosis, be excellent. He says, find me somebody excellent. I dare you to be excellent. Be excellent in speech, excellent in your words, excellent in your, in your uh, character, excellent in your integrity. Keep your word. Follow through. Dress well. Take an extra five minutes. Press your shirt. See, we are spending all of this time and energy watching all these videos on 10 ways to do sales tactics and ways to funnel this and funnel that and close people and handle objections and all this stuff. And you should. But being excellent will be the greatest thing you do for your business, even if you don't feel excellent, because there are times you won't feel it. But if you carry yourself well, go back to thankfulness. My glass is half full. It is not half empty. Look at all of my blessings. I've gained huge amounts of ground. Having a tough time, but you know what? I'll put that on the shelf and I'll leave it there for now. Put a pause on it because now I have to be excellent. Not only for them, but also for me and my business or my life or whatever you're representing. Right? I knew Holly and I went to a concert one day and it was the most incredible, one of the top trumpet players in the world. He was with the Nashville Symphony. He came in to, to play with the Nashville Symphony and he was there on stage and he was playing this stuff. And as, he, as the notes were coming out, you felt the emotion raging through his instrument and it was really hitting your heart. You could feel it. And what he said was, and he paused about mm, quarter way into the concert and he said, forgive me. I got a little bit overwhelmed here. I have to, I just had to take, you see, he was having some, some hard times getting through it. He said, I just received a phone call before I came out on stage that one of his parents had passed away. And he said, I'm here in their honor. They supported me my whole life to be here. I'm playing for you. I just wanted to share that because I'm, I am having a hard time, which was unbelievably honest in the place. I, I think it was standing ovation that happened. And he kept on pressing through because of it. See, sometimes you might be having a bad day, but you have to turn all that stuff off so you can maintain that posture of excellence. I'm telling you, you being excellent, cleaning up what people see, what people see, what people see and hear, wait, all of it, out of self-respect and respect for others, you'll bypass 98% of the world. And when you're excellent, people listen to you differently. They listen to your opportunity differently. They respect you differently. They give you audience differently. That's the facts. So I hope these points are encouraging. This is how you win. The glass is half full. It's not half empty. I have gained a tremendous amount of traction. I, there is not some gaping hole and some gaping deficiency where nothing has worked out and nothing happens. We have to pan out, look at where, how far we've come, walk in excellence, walk in gratitude and make sure that we just clean up things because if we are in business or we're in anything we do in life has to have a human interaction. Nothing is done without the human dynamic and people read people. People are saying, fake it till you make it. Not hardly. There's no such thing as that. You press in, you be excellent. And regardless of what's going on, make sure that you posture yourself that way if you want to succeed in life. I promise you it's one of the greatest gifts that you can give to them and give to yourself. So I hope all of my little illustrations have been helpful and that this little mini training has been a blessing to you. But you've got this, folks. You've got it. There's nothing you can't, there's no mountain that you can't climb right now by just panning out, looking at how far you've come. You're not a statistic. And maybe tweaking a few things. Then focusing on the things that you've done well, your victories, how far you've come. It'll bring joy back. It'll bring excitement back. Your creativity will come back. 
and you won't feel like everything is not working, everything is falling apart, I've gained no ground. Because we get blind to that. Even if we've gained the world, many times we've forgotten that we have. How many people have everything? Houses, the cars, the stuff, the truck, all of the material things, and they're some of the most miserable, most depressed human beings in the world. Why? Because they have forgotten how far they've come, and they're still looking for fulfillment. First of all, that stuff doesn't fulfill, ultimately. And it's a slippery slope. Make sense? You guys are a blessing. I will see you on the next video. Bye.